This is a video about grips. Okay, so everybody's used to this one. They've probably seen this at their club, even if you've never used one. Uh, this is a French grip. Something to note about this is that most people think of it as a stick, but there's actually a bit of a curve on one of the sides. This one is right-handed. A lot of times you'll see the lefty ones as red instead of blue. You might see the, um, this part as silver or whatnot. But the way that we like to think about this is training wheels for fencers. So this is how most people are like naturally gonna try and hold it or something like this when they're kids. But really the whole point of using this type of grip is to teach people to control the tip of just these two fingers. So if you were to watch like a distant unit, you can see something along these lines, okay? Where it, it is not the wrist that's moving, it's actually just the index and the thumb. In Epe, you see this used a lot because you can actually change how you're holding it. Some people will hold it at the back. These people tend to do a lot of like counter attacks or like picking the hand, things like that. So you see this motion a ton. Like maybe a fake and then one of the Okay, now these ones, in my opinion, are super important for beginners because it just actually teaches them how to hold a sword, how to point it at the target, as opposed to like this, which results in this motion. That's heavily shoulder-based without much point control. Now we're gonna talk about these two types because you are probably using one of these two unless if you fence epee. Uh, first, I'm gonna start with this one because in my opinion, this is, I don't wanna say it's more of a beginner type weapon, but it, the way that you hold this determines kind of what sort of fencing you're gonna do. Um, in both cases, these types of grips, so I learned of this one as a Belgian grip. Some people say, oh, it's a Russian handle or whatever. It looks, di it looks very different from a typical Visconti grip like the other one. The important thing to note is this part right here. And even without holding one, even if you don't own one of these grips, I want you to pretend you're holding one because that's really gonna kind of show you what that type of fencer is going to do with their arm, okay? So this little thing in the middle actually separates your fingers like this. Okay, so if you're holding it like this, yes, you can still guide the blade, the tip, with your fingers, like with these two muscles, mostly. Uh, so you could still pinch it, but because your hand is sort of separated like this, it tends to be really good for like heavy, like entire arm movements, like this, or a lot of times you might see someone do sort of like a feint and then a big pull or like a big swing to hit the other person's blade. So that's why I think it ends up being a little bit easier to use than the other one. Um, you can still accomplish all the same things. You can still flick with these, fine, etc., etc. But compare that to the typical handles. These are the ones that most people are going to see. Um, this is actually an older model of the Ullman and All Star handles. You can see I added a little bit of tape on it, as a lot of people like to do, just to not only weight the blade at the bottom, but basically make it so you don't really have to squeeze with your pinky to hold the grip. Um, so I actually like to hold these like this. Some people will hold it, if you could bring the camera right behind. People typically hold it either like this or like this. So, Show both. Show yeah, both. so you're either resting it here, here, or on the very tip of the finger. So it could be here. This is how a lot of people first learn. Some people start to try and pinpoint it a little bit more with the index finger. Some people, especially taller fencers, might even like to hold it a bit on the side, okay? So you could even think kind of like pointing with a pencil. Okay, now these ones, and these are actually what I use now. Um, and when I was younger, I used to use Belgian grips, but I think these provide a lot more flexibility with your fencing. They allow for a lot more like differences in angulation. If I were to use something like this, and I were to want to create an angle, I would most likely try and turn my hand to try and touch a different target. Right? This, you see this type of stuff all the time. You're trying to fence a lefty, so you see this movement. With this type of grip, because, they're, because it's not so, I guess, clunky is, is how I tend to think of them now, you can actually create the angle more with your wrist as opposed to rotating the hand. You can see, like, even when I do it like this, it might bounce off. Um, as opposed to this motion. So in this one, he keeps his thumb on top, and the other one, he's literally rotating the whole blade. And okay. if you use the, show them with the, the. Well, hold on. And the thing is, a lot of people still use these ones and rotate. And I don't. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. It's just these ones actually allow you, in my opinion, to be more flexible at the wrist. 
So you can, uh, one, of the, one of the actions you might see people who use these types of handles do a lot, or not a lot, but if someone gets in close, it's much easier to do this type of motion, okay? And that's just because of uh, just the, the limitations on Try that again. where it's locking do your that again, do that again. place. Like this head, okay? Or the Louis Special. So uh, you can do a lot of very close distance stuff um, using these handles. And in my opinion, they just allow for the most flexibility. So like even if you're point blank and you're going for like a flick, you can create like a pretty big arc with very little space. The main thing to note though is that in order to use these properly, you do need to have a lot more finger strength because you're not using your entire hand. Like it's, you're not locking your hand in place. So if you're trying to squeeze it as most beginners do with these muscles, you'll see a lot of beginners when they're not fencing, they'll be kind of holding it like this. They'll just be kind of like reclining the blade on uh, the pinky and the ring finger. And this is what results in this type of hit where people are just kind of jamming their palm forward. You can see it's basically like shoulders activating and then this pops out, okay? And again, this might lead us to some success, but I think it is a lot less accurate than guiding it with your fingers. Um, and yeah. Okay, so something I wanna note is there are a few types of these grips. So this is the, these two I would probably recommend the most. You could see like All Star and All Men have like probably the most common one or the most popular. It's really, really good, really comfortable, and it's thin. And it's thick enough in the front that you can still hold it, but not too thin. So like compare that to the Yen's grip. They are pretty much the same, but there's just a little bit of difference in terms of how thin it is in the front um, and the smoothness of the grip. This one is quite pretty though. This is one that I see all the time that beginners use. Now, unless if you are like six feet tall, and your hands are like pretty darn big, you probably should not be using this. I see a lot of people, a lot of kids who will be like, oh, I wear a medium sized jacket, so I should probably have a medium sized fencing handle. And even if you are like as tall as Miles Chamley Watson, he still will use these size handles, which are just like the size small, okay? So I really do not recommend you use these, or at least please consult with your coach because 99% of the time, the blue handles are too big. And these ones are the PBT, I believe it's PBT type A. They're cool because they're kind of a hybrid of the other two. Um, not that many fencers uh, that I know actually use these handles, but the ones that I have seen use them, you're either really good or a complete psychopath. Yeah. A quick note about the, the French grip. So, yeah. so, Depending on where you're from, some people like to hold it like this, and they'll say, yeah, this lets you do this, it still lets you flick and whatnot. Um, something that you can very clearly see with this handle is that, let's say I was this close, and I wanted to hit the target. Even if I try and pull my arm back, it doesn't really leave that much room. So you actually need to adjust how you are holding it, so you can let it go underneath your palm to create a bit of extra space. Some people might go on top, although this one I generally do not recommend. So even if I was to do this, I would want to actually bring the handle to the bottom of my palm, and that actually lets me create a much uh, narrower angle to then hit the target. 